This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Nineteen ninety three's fall previews roll on. From the pop culture bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. Well, those darn 1993 TV shows just keep rolling, so let's go back to that. On Monday, we had Dave's World. Harry Anderson returned to TV after a long run on Night Court as a fictionalized version of columnist Dave Barry. He lives in Miami with his wife, Delaine Matthews, and two kids. Shadow Stevens, normally an announcer, plays his editor, and Meshach Taylor, his neighbor. He was just coming off his run on Designing Women. In the second season, Patrick Warburton came on as a new neighbor, while he was also playing Putty on Seinfeld. The series ran for four seasons, only getting the axe after being moved to Friday nights. Saved by the Bell, the college years, NBC. An attempt to extend the Saturday morning teen series to prime time. As generally happens on sitcoms, and never in real life, the main cast... Mark Paul Gosselaire, Dustin Diamond, Tiffany Amber Thiessen, Mario Lopez, all go to the same college, the fictitious California University. Bob Golick, a former NFL player, is the dorm advisor. Holland Taylor was later brought in as the dean and authority figure. The show only lasted a season, partly due to its competition, Full House, but it did end with a two-hour TV movie where Zach and Kelly go to Vegas to get married. Phenom on ABC. Judith Light returns to TV, coming off a long run on Who's the Boss, as the mom of young tennis pro Angela, played by Angela Gothels, in this sitcom. Funny how the name Angela is used. Angela! William Devane plays her obsessive coach and asks Fleet Johnson, her younger sister. In an example of cutting off your nose to spite your face, William Devane fought to get top billing on the show, but ABC thought that Light was a bigger draw. Devane refused and is not credited on the show at all. Gothels was better known for film, Home Alone, Jerry Maguire, and The Stage. Sam Simon was a co-creator and James L. Brooks an executive producer. But despite all this, the show lasted all of one season. Bakersfield PD on Fox. This action-sitcom hybrid starred Ron Eldard and Giancarlo Esposito as police detectives. Esposito had just transferred from D.C. and Eldard takes his cues from TV cop shows. This laugh track free show with Brian Doyle Murray that plays the captain would last less than a season, but Esposito would go on to Breaking Bad. It's considered by some to be a lost classic, comparing it to Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Mm. The John Larroquette Show on NBC. John returns to TV after a long run on Night Court in a role that was so popular that he removed himself from Emmy consideration after winning four in a row as Dan Fielding. Now he plays an alcoholic... He was in real life, having fallen to the point of working a night job running a bus station. He dealt with other broken characters, employees, Liz Torres, Daryl Mitchell, Chi McBride, cops, Lenny Clark and Elizabeth Barrage, and regulars Gigi Rice and John F. Donahue. David Crosby, yes that one, had a recurring role as John's AA sponsor. A young Mayim Bialik played his daughter, and in an unaired episode, Ryan Reynolds played his son. The first season did very poorly, partly due to having competition like Roseanne, but also because it was a very dark show. It was on only an hour after Saved by the Bell, for goodness sakes. Larroquette retooled the series, literally moving the show's setting to daytime and giving his character a more upbeat life with a girlfriend played by Alison LaPlaca. That allowed it to run for three and a half additional seasons, the last six episodes aired on USA Network. Like many NBC shows at the time, there were cameos and crossovers. The Golden Girls stopped by the bus station, and John's character called Fraser Crane for advice once. The show got huge critical raves, perhaps it was ahead of its time. It really seems more, especially the first season, like a Netflix series. Mm -hmm. The second half on NBC. John Mendoza stars as a divorced sports columnist dealing with his kids, his ex, his brother, Wayne Knight pre-Newman, and getting back into dating. There was a time when networks were handing deals to any upcoming stand-ups, hoping to spark something. It didn't happen in this case. The show lasted 15 episodes, unable to fight off its competition, Coach. NYPD Blue, ABC. Like Hill Street Blues before it, this Stephen Bochco-produced series used the gritty reality of police work as a backdrop for the personal lives of the characters involved. 
It also involved more nudity than had been allowed on broadcast TV to that time, which dogged in controversy. 25% of ABC's affiliates refused to air the first episode, and the Parents Television Council was formed as a response to this series. Despite all this, it ran for 12 seasons, the longest-running one-hour drama on ABC, until Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> the show was originally designed as a vehicle for David Caruso, who walked away for a movie career after season two, a career which never happened. Dennis France, the only cast regular to stay the entire run, became more of a focus, although there was a huge cast to cover. Jerry Stringfield, Amy Brenneman, Sharon Lawrence, Jimmy Smits, Kim Delaney, Rick Schroeder, no longer Ricky, and Mark Paul Gosselier, long after Saved by the Bell, were just a few of the actors that rotated through the series over its run. NYPD Blue would go on to win dozens of awards, including 20 Emmys and four Golden Globes, and was in the top 30 ratings for 10 seasons. David Milch, co-executive producer with Bochco, would of course go on to cable shows such as Deadwood. Moving on to Wednesday. Thea on ABC, another case of Give Every New Stand-Up a Sitcom. This series stars Thea Vidal as a plus-size black widower with four kids, checking several boxes. It was the first time that an African-American female comedian was the star of an eponymous series, but not a successful one. The show was gone in 19 episodes, and Thea didn't go on to much else aside from guest roles and a run on WWE. It seems like this would have worked better on the WB or UPN if they had existed then. Mm -hmm. A young Brandy played one of the kids who went on to UPN's Moesha. The Trouble with Larry on CBS. Bronson Pinchot returns to TV after his long run on ABC's Perfect Strangers in a concept that might have worked a generation earlier. He's an African explorer who disappears, then returns ten years later to find his wife, Jana Reed, who had just finished Major Dad, has remarried to her new husband, Perry King. He falls in love with his former sister-in-law, played by Courtney Cox. You. CBS kicked off the series early in August, only three weeks after Perfect Strangers ended, in order to get some momentum. I think they saw the writing on the wall. The show was gone before most of the other new shows had even premiered. A good thing for Courtney Cox, who got a slightly more successful series the next year. A similar concept had been tried back in 1978, Baby I'm Back with Demond Wilson, which also failed. Joe's Life on ABC, Peter Onorati from This Is Us, stars in this sitcom as an out-of-work electrician who ends up taking care of his three kids while mom, Mary Paige Keller, works. Eventually, he gets a job as a chef, of course, at his brother's restaurant. His nephew is played by a young Danny Masterson from That 70s Show. The show only ran 11 episodes, even as the lead-in to Behemoth Home Improvement, with one going unaired. Mark, we're talking too much. I think this episode is too long, and we have to go to a third. <laughs> okay. So, again, while you're waiting for our next episode, you can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching.